Good morning, everyone, uh, and thank you for staying for the talk. Uh, I know one more talk and then coffee. Uh, all right, my name is Emin, and today I will tell you about how we evaluated um, user interest profiles using ad preference managers. So by now, we have a good understanding of the online tracking ecosystem. We know that users are tracked when they go online. And we also have a good idea of how these companies are tracking you, for example, by using cookies or fingerprinting. And we have seen in previous talks as well, like DNS-based methods as well. Uh, but the idea is that these companies are embedded in the page, and they are looking at your information. Uh, but we exactly don't know what they are looking at. For example, some of the companies on this website could infer very generic information, such as sports or shoes, whereas other companies could infer very specific information, such as soccer shoes and even a brand of the shoe you were looking at. And the idea behind uh, inferring, making these inferences is that they, they want to build a profile or an interest profile about you so that later they can show you, you know, a clean targeted ad. Um, and increase the revenue. But the point still remains the same. We don't exactly know what these companies are inferring about you. These are essentially black boxes. And this is exactly what we want to do. We want to, in the goal, uh, the goal of the study is, uh, is to, know, we want to know who is um, looking at what information and exactly how much they know about you. And we also want to know how do users perceive uh, these interests uh, which are inferred about them by these companies. Uh, we, we also look at uh, the origin of these interests, like how are these inferences drawn by these companies. And uh, if you, for example, uh, the fourth goal is like if you use any privacy conscious behavior, such as using any tracker blocking extensions, does that reduce the amount of inferences drawn by these companies? Uh, due to time limitation, I won't be able to go into goal number three and four, uh, but if you are interested, please read the paper. But, uh, to achieve these goals, uh, one of the main challenges is that we don't have insights into the black boxes uh, by these companies. We don't know what they're inferring. And we need to know the inferences. To this end, we use ad preference managers, which are transparency tools uh, provided by these companies, which let users control some of the inferences and the interest they want to, sh to, uh, to see targeted ads on or not see targeted ads on. For example, this is a screenshot from Google Ad Setting, or Google Ad Preference Manager. And here, Google has made some inferences about this person, which is me, that this person is between this age and the gender, and they are interested in some other you know, activities. And I can technically go and like, remove some of these inferences from my profile. So we use these inferences, or Ad Preference Managers, and collect these inferences to conduct our study. So in the rest of the talk, I will explain how we use these APMs uh, to do our data collection. And then I will tell you, about, uh, tell you how we um, use these interests to see, um, uh, how to compare essentially the interest across different APMs and how users perceive those interests. And I will conclude with providing uh, with some limitations. So for data collection, we recruited 220 participants. 82 from Pakistan, which were recruited in, um, in person from a university, and 138 were recruited in US uh, using a crowdsourced platform uh, called Prolific. Now, all these uh, participants uh, were given a browser extension through which they took a survey, and they contributed their data from the APMs and some of their historical data, such as their browsing history and search term history. Since we are collecting user information, we had to follow ethical guidelines. Uh, we obtained IRB from both LUMS and Northeastern uh, before conducting our study, and we obtained informed consent before, uh, from the user before we started collecting any data from them. And this is how our extension looks like. So in the foreground where the user could interact with the extension by clicking or something, um, that's the foreground aspect, and in the background we are collecting some information where users don't interact with the extension by themselves. So for example, in the foreground, we asked questions about their basic demographics, such as age, location, et cetera. We also asked about uh, some general web usage questions. How often they visit um, social media, how often they post on social media, how often they use banking websites, et cetera. We also asked about their interaction with the online advertisements and whether they use any privacy, uh, privacy tools, such as using Adblock Plus or uBlock Origin. 
Whereas in the background, we are collecting historical data, last three months of search history and browsing history. And our major chunk comes from uh, ad preference managers. Like we collect these inferences or interest gathered by, um, by, by these companies for the user. So we, in our study, we conduct, uh, so we gather interest from four major APMs, Google, Facebook, Exilate, and Blue Card. And while we do this, we also randomly sample some uh, interest and we ask some questions about them in the dynamic part of the survey. And dynamic part looks like this. Let's say one of the randomly sampled interest was soccer shoe. So we would ask the user, are you interested in soccer shoes? And we would also ask the user, have they recently seen an advertisement related to, to that interest? And if they say yes, we then ask a follow-up. Did you find that ad useful or relevant? So in summary, we uh, collected data from 220 participants, and for each participant, we have data from the foreground and background. In the foreground, we have some survey questions like you know, basic demographics, general web usage, and we also ask about the relevance of the interests. And in the background, we collect interest from APMs like Facebook, Google, BlueKai, Exilate, and we have some historical data, such as browsing history and search term history. So now that we have this data, we can go back to our goals and start you know, uh, understanding them. So first goal was like, who knows what and how much? In particular, we want to know what inferences are drawn by these companies, by, these, by each APM. And also, uh, does each APM infer the same information about the user, or they, do they have different information you know, uh, for the same user? So uh, questioning, uh, answering the question which APM knows more, this table shows the amount of information learned by each, uh, each APM. So you have uh, the column for APM, the number of users for which we collected the data for, the unique number of inferences they have made in total, uh, and total number of inferences and average number of inferences per user. So clearly you can see that Facebook is the winner. They collect a whole bunch of inferences about users up to 500 uh, you know, per, uh, on average. While Exilate is the small player in the ecosystem, they have low profiles uh, about users. Another thing to notice over here is that BlueKai had a profile on every single user in our study. So this shows you aggregates, but we also wanted to study, uh, were interested in like, um, how does this, uh, this picture look like per participant? For that, I plot this CDF. So on the x-axis, you have number of interest per participant, and, on the, uh, and it's a CDF of participant, essentially. But you can still see that the Facebook is, is the winner, and Exilate knows the least information. One interesting thing to notice over here is that Google has a cap of categories about the user. So you can see it uh, quickly converges. Uh, but in the previously graph that I compared, uh, it is essentially not fair to compare these interests because different APMs could infer different information about you, but the topic could be the same. For example, uh, synonyms. For example, one APM could infer real estate while the other could infer property. Now, they're both inferring the same sort of information, but if you compare them or you look at them, that's not exactly you know, fair. And the other problem is granularity. One could be inferring very generic information, such as sports, whereas one could be drilling down to the very specific one, such as the tennis tournament, which is Wimbledon. So the point is, for fair comparison, we need to map these interests to a common space. And to that end, we use Open Directory Project, which, is, which provides a hierarchy of interests so you can map them to like, you know, common spaces. So we manually mapped all these raw interests to 465 categories provided by ODP. For example, uh, let's say Facebook inferred soccer and Blue Kai inferred softball, we will map both these categories, uh, interests to an ODP category, which is sports. Now that we have this uh, mapping to a common space, we can start looking, okay, does that affect this picture which I showed you earlier? So if I plot the CDF of the ODB categories now, you can still see that the magnitude obviously has reduced, but still like Facebook knows or has the la la largest amount of profiles about the user. You can see that the Google and Blue Kai line have come closer together, but still the trend is still the same across the two graphs. So, so we've seen that these companies are like, some, some is inferring more about you, some inferring less. The other thing we wanted to look at was, uh, are there any overlaps between these APMs? For example, do they infer the same information about you or not? So for that purpose, I plot this graph. On the x-axis, you have the APM, 
And on the y-axis, I will show the overlap from other APMs uh, per, uh, for, for, for that particular APM. For example, over here, you can see that the median Google user's interest profile has 20% overlap with Blue Kai, whereas that median overlap goes to 65 for Facebook. And that is, uh, you know, that makes sense because Facebook has the largest amount of profile, so they will have more overlap with you. So if I, you know, plot this for other um, APMs, you can still see the trend. Like overall, the overlap remains low. One exception is, you know, blue, uh, sorry, uh, Facebook, which has the largest overlap, up to 50 to 60 percent with other APMs. So the key takeaways from this goal is that different APMs have different portraits of users and probably under, different underlying data sources. And we saw that in our experiments, in our data set, that Facebook relies, Facebook is a social network. It relies on your likes, whereas BlueKai is a, is a tracker. It relies on tracking information, but also it has partnerships with data brokers, such as Axiom, Data Logics. So it, you know, it just gets this branded data from them. The other thing we noticed that there is a lack of overlap across APMs. So, this brings us to our next question. Okay, they have different portraits about different users, but does that mean that someone has better information about you or you know, uh, some more relevant information about you? So to answer that, we look at um, how users perceive these interests which are inferred about them. Uh, in particular, we want to see, do some APMs infer more relevant interest and do users find ads targeted against these interests relevant or not? And this goes back to our dynamic, uh, dynamic part where we showed like, you know, an interest and we asked follow-up questions, whether you saw an ad or whether the ad was relevant or not. And I would like to motivate this goal by this score. Half the money I spent on advertising is wasted. The trouble is I don't know which half. So the target advertisement was basically uh, meant to address this question. Like, okay, if I can infer more relevant information, I can, you know, address my money-wasting problem. So in this graph I show fraction of relevant interest um, mark, uh, marked on a scale of one to five, so five being the most relevant, one being the um, least relevant, and the CDS of participants. So if you just look at um, relevant interest as four or five, you see that curve. Uh, you see like a lot of interest are not marked as relevant, but if I relax this assumption a little bit, uh, like if I include three, uh, three, uh, three to five as relevant, you see that the numbers um, get higher a little bit, the, re the relevancy numbers. In particular, like uh, 80, in the more restricted case, 83% of the users found majority of the interest less relevant, but this number goes down to 56% if I relax the assumption, if I relax the constraint. So next, what we wanted to see, um, given an interest, how likely a user is uh, to see an ad. So uh, we, we broke it down per relevancy scale. For example, over here you can see for Facebook um, where the interests were very le relevant, five, users saw more ads or recall seeing more ads, whereas the, the, the percentage goes low when the interest relevance is one. So if I extend this to every APM, you can see a general trend. You can see across all APMs, user recall seeing more ads with more relevant interests. And this is, you know, um, consistent across all APMs. One potential explanation for this is that advertisers somehow know which interests are more relevant and they show you more ads. Or the other explanation is that users just have some bias recalling irrelevant ads. They just simply don't remember, um, you know, irrelevant ads from the past. So if, I, if you remember this picture I showed you, you know, a couple of seconds earlier, uh, majority of the interests are marked not relevant, but the advertiser could say, oh, users are not in the best position to determine whether the ad, whether the interest is relevant or not, unless I show them an ad about it. So to that, we, we map it to our other dynamic question where we, we asked the question whether the ad was relevant to the user conditioned upon them seeing the ad. So, if you look at this graph, you can see the trend that users did not recall, uh, users did not find ads um, rel uh, useful, uh, you know, with, with low relevant interests. Which means that uh, ads targeted against these low relevant interests are potentially, you know, money is being uh, potentially wasted across these interests. So the key takeaways from here are that majority of the interest 
are marked not relevant by the user, and ads targeted to low relevant interest are marked not useful. So before I uh, conclude, I want to uh, tell you some limitations. The participant sample in our study is not representative. We just got like some users from, which were students from Pakistan and uh, prolific users, crowdsourced users in US. And it is a single snapshot of APMs. A better way would be to conduct a longitudinal study um, over time to see whether how these interests or APMs profile change. Um, and obviously, users can have biases in recalling relevant ads. So in summary, we conduct a first large scale study of interest profiles across four APMs. We saw that different APMs have different portraits of the users and potentially different underlying data sources. And we saw that uh, only few interest, less than 30% of the interests were marked strongly relevant by users. And users did not find ads you know, you know, um, useful against low relevant interest. So I will just like to sum it up with the question that, uh, are the marginal utility gains from targeted ads justified at the cost of privacy? So I guess as a community, we need to understand the efficacy of like targeted advertisement and maybe potentially more studies across that. There are more interesting uh, results in the paper, and I encourage you to read the paper for that. And thank you for your attention. With that, I would like to take any questions. <laughs> hey, thanks for your talk. Uh, did you have a look at the, uh, how the interest, uh, like the profiles developed, whether they changed over the course of your study? And um, yeah, if, if, I don't know, the, yeah. there were more or less interest added during the study and stuff like that? I mean, unfortunately, that's one of the limitations because it's a single snapshot. Like, we just gave the browser extension to the user, took the survey, we are collecting interest. Like, ideally, if we had the extension developed over a period of time, so we could see, like, oh, because of this, like, the interest got added to the APM profile or something like that. That would be ideal. Uh -huh. And we are in the process of conducting a study like this. Okay. Uh, but for this study, we have a single snapshot. We have no way of telling how this evolved because there is no time associated with each interest. Yeah. And if, can I get another? Okay. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting to also measure not only if people think in ads are interesting, but also if they click on them? Because maybe you know, advertising also works with generating interest into something people probably don't know that they're interested in something. So maybe if you do a follow-up, you didn't do that, right? Uh, I don't think we asked whether they clicked on it. Um, I, I can get back to you with like, well, yeah. like okay. by looking at the survey, but I don't think we asked them about okay. whether they clicked on it. Yeah, we asked whether they found it useful or mm -hmm. relevant. Yeah. OK, thank you. So I don't get your question exactly. So like, like Facebook, I click on something and they know something about yes. it. Yes. Uh, YouTube, I assume, doesn't have a like button. Uh, yes. So it could be a, right, so like, does that somehow change your I see, I see. So Blue Guy is a major tracker. And we also saw that they have like these partnership with data brokers. They just like get this data from them. Um, but one of the results, uh, we were interested in the privacy practices, or like using these privacy conscious behaviors, was that whether this affects your size of the APM, the size of the interest profile they have inferred. And interestingly, we found no correlation. Like, if a user is using you know, these tracker blocking extensions, they have the same amount of interest inferred about by them as compared to like, you know, users who are not using them. Uh, but this could be, one explanation could be that the users maybe are like overestimating how much they are you know, privacy conscious. But the other explanation is that these companies are relying on other data sources rather than just tracking. Uh, which we have seen in previous studies as well. They have like you know these business relationships with, the, with each other. Um, they often talk to data brokers and they get data from them. So there are potential explanations for that. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. Let's thank. Uh,